This week finally passed this carbon dioxide tax to help stop global warming, just as a rainstorm hit Canberra. Even the uh, heavens are uh, <laughs> clapping. <laughs> clapping or mocking? Fact is, we've been told by Chief Climate Commissioner Tim Flannery that global warming had dried the rains and drained our dams, quote, to the point where they're now affecting the future of some of our cities. Even the rain that falls isn't actually going to fill our dams and our, our river systems. Joining me is Flannery's fellow Climate Commissioner, Professor Will Stephan. I appreciate your time, Professor. Now, Thank you, one Andrew. thing that makes me so sceptical that we're heating the world dangerously are these sorts of exaggerations. Have alarmists like Professor Flannery hurt your cause? Well, I think you have to bear in mind uh, that these are projections for the future. And around rainfall, there is some uncertainty. Now, what he was referring to uh, was the southern part of Australia. And there, there is a risk that we will we'll see continued uh, drying, uh, the recent uh, El Nino-driven rain notwithstanding. Uh, but, th but you're absolutely right. There is a lot of uncertainty about uh, rainfall change, how it's going to pan out around much of our continent. Um, can we put to bed some of uh, the other scares that like uh, people like uh, Tim Flannery have blamed man-made warming for causing more and worse hurricanes and cyclones? But according to your own recent report, there's no proof of that at all, is there? No, there's no statistically uh, significant evidence that we've seen a, a change in the behaviour of tropical cyclones around the world. Uh, most experts agree, however, that we will see uh, an increase in intensity uh, in these cyclones as the warming continues. But as yet, your own report says it's not possible, and I'm quoting, to attribute any aspect of changes in cyclone behaviour, frequency, intensity, rainfall, etc., to climate change. That's correct. Um, we've also been told by this government that the recent drought in the Murray-Darling Basin was caused by global warming. Again, your own report says there's nothing unusual about that drought either. Is that true? Uh, we've had very severe droughts uh, before, so again, we cannot attribute this drought uh, statistically to climate change. However, I do want to point out uh, that as the temperature warms, the droughts will become more severe uh, simply because plants and animals will be subject to higher temperatures, and that stresses them as well as lack of rainfall. Uh, so we'll continue to have a continent of, of droughts and flooding rains, but as the temperature rises, uh, this will place more stress on our animals, plants, and social systems. The predictions are one thing. I'm talking really about the alarms and before, like uh, when Penny Wong was climate change minister, she actually did say this severe extended drought is clearly linked with global warming, and now we say actually it's not. No, I think the jury's still out on that, uh, Andrew. As I said, rainfall is a very tricky thing to both attribute and project, much more complex than temperature. So we scientists tend to be rather cautious uh, before making uh, such claims. More cautious than Penny Wong. Um, has, in fact, there been any pause uh, in the global warming over the past decade? It seems to me for a decade the temperature has leveled out, the seas have cooled over the last few years, sea levels have dropped since about 2003. Has this made you rethink just how much man is in fact changing the climate. Well, some of those observations, I think, Andrew, are incorrect if you actually look at the peer-reviewed literature. Uh, the oceans have not stopped warming. In fact, the, the heat content of the ocean has been rising steadily uh, not through this last, last few decade. Years, Professor. No, no, they have. Uh, the latest uh, data I've seen that go through to 2008, 2009, uh, the warming has indeed continued. Uh, sea levels have continued to rise as well. They're rising at about 3.2 uh, millimeters uh, per year, and uh, that rate has increased over the last couple of decades. The other point I will make is there's obviously a lot of natural variability in the climate system, which still continues to operate. So we never, ever look at long-term climate trends on a few years. In my view, you need a minimum of three decades, and if you have more than three decades, that's much better. When you look at it on, uh, in that time frame, there's absolutely no doubt the climate system is continuing to, to warm uh, precisely as we expect. Well, in fact, uh, Professor Judith Curry, who's not a skeptic, uh, she chairs the Department of Earth and Atmospheric Science at uh, Georgia University of Technology, has said this concept of a recent pause in the warming seems to be fairly widely accepted by many mainstream consensus scientists. And like, uh, for example, the sea level rises, the Envirosat, I think, satellite the maintained by the Europeans says there's been no rise since 2003. So there is a consensus that there has been no warming over the decade. 
No, I think, uh, I think to be fair to Professor Kerr, I think she was referring to air temperature, which is actually a very small component of where the extra heat is actually going into the Earth's surface. When you look at the entire climate system, uh, the ice, the ocean, the land, and the atmosphere, it con it's continuing to warm uh, over the past decade. So I think we need to be careful about what part, of the, what part of the climate system we're actually talking about. And can I ask you finally, the carbon dioxide tax cutting our temperatures, uh, our emissions by 5 percent to 2020, how much to the nearest degree do you think that will actually cut global temperatures? Well that's, that's not a calculation that, that we make, in fact it's not a question that we ask. The question we ask in science is at what level can we stabilize the climate system? Is it going to be two degrees above pre-industrial, three or four? That's but it's the going question. to make a difference. So, so yes, and, and I think what we need to say is two things about the 5% target. One, it's actually a very ambitious target in terms of, of per capita emission reductions from today. It's more like 25 or 30 percent, which is significant. Second of all, it's a first important step uh, on a longer pathway uh, to going toward decarbonized economies. And the third point is um, Australia uh, is, is seen as a major player. We're one of the 20 largest emitters uh, in the world, and we're expected to do our fair share just like we do in other uh, international issues like Afghanistan. Professor Stephan, thank you so much for coming on the show.